Tales from the Crypt changed the horror genre. In fact, it became the most important horror comic ever, and we're gonna show you why. Happy Halloween, my comic comrades. Long before Tales from the Crypt became a hit TV series for HBO in the 1980s and 90s, it was arguably the most influential horror comic ever made. This comic quite literally helped change the horror genre across the board, influencing so many of the creepy stories that came after. If you're a diehard horror fan, you know exactly why and how important Tales from the Crypt was to horror. If not, you're about to find out. Tales from the Crypt debuted in 1950 by EC Comics. It's an American bi-monthly horror comic anthology series. Its original run lasted for 27 issues, 20 through 46. The reason the series started at issue 20 is because the series went through several name changes before landing on Tales from the Crypt and becoming the horror staple we now know. For issues 1 through 5, the series was International Comics, International Crime Patrol for issue 6, Crime Patrol for 7 through 16, and The Crypt of Terror for 17 through 19, for a total of 46 issues in the series. With that said, Tales also had sister titles that didn't become as iconic, but still great nonetheless. The Vault of Horror, and The Haunt of Fear. Each title also had its own primary horror host. Tales from the Crypt had The Crypt Keeper, The Vault of Horror had The Vault Keeper, and The Haunt of Fear had The Old Witch. The three of them would cross over into each other's titles having an ongoing rivalry, and they would become known as the Ghoul Lunatics. The Crypt Keeper would first appear in Crime Patrol 15 in January of 1950. And as you can see, he looked very different from what would become his iconic skeleton look given to him when the character hit live action in the Tales from the Crypt 90s anthology live action show. But more on that later. Anyway, back then, he was just a creepy, still alive old creeper with long white hair and a cane that hid in the shadows saying stuff like, Welcome, dead reader. I am the keeper of the Crypt of Terror. Come in and I will tell you a story guaranteed to make your blood freeze in your veins. A story that will make your hair stand on end. This tale from my collection is called Return from the Grave, an introduction format that would become a staple for the Crypt Keeper. Now, as for the stories themselves, it's an anthology series of cautionary tales often dealing with revenge, irony, and consequences. For instance, take a look at the first story in Tales of the Crypt issue 20 titled The Thing from the Sea. The story is about a man who last minute needs to board a ship named the Ocean Queen to leave from New York to England. They tell him they only have one stateroom left, that is if you're not superstitious. One of the beds in the room is already taken, but the man does not care as he needs to get on that ship. He boards the ship and the steward asks if he could take his bags to his room. He says yes, stateroom 13. The color then drains from the steward's cheeks and his eyes fill with fear as he just looks at the man. The man says, why do you seem to be troubled, steward? With the steward saying, nothing, sir, nothing at all. Once at the cabin, the steward checks to see if the porthole is securely bolted. At this point, the man asks, what's the matter? The steward says, no one who has ever been assigned to this room has completed crossing it. Something, someone frightens them to leave it. One passenger even went mad from what he saw. The steward, tell me what they saw. The steward mumbles something about a ghost and runs off. Long story short, the man eventually meets his roommate, and in the middle of the night, the porthole opens up with his roommate screaming in fright, saying, no, 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 and runs down the hall. The man, still convinced this place isn't really haunted, sleeps in the stateroom one more night, but this time discovers some sort of monster sleeping in the top bunk, where his roommate was frightened the night before, but the monster gets away. So the following morning, the man talks to the captain, but the man is still not convinced it's a monster and thinks it must be a stowaway. He says someone is trying to scare away the guests to get a free trip. So him and the captain camp out that night to overpower whoever the person is. Sure enough, when night falls, the captain looks in the bunk and the monster is there yet again, with the captain sweating in fear, saying, no, it can't can't be you. You're dead. I murdered you. I killed you right there in that bed. Pushed you out the porthole into the sea. You can't be. As the old captain, horrified, falls to the floor, dying in fright, with the monster disappearing in the porthole closed and bolted yet again. That's right, this monster was a zombie of someone that the captain had killed long ago. The comic then ends with the Crypt Keeper saying, that's the story, dear reader. The captain received the shock of his life. Well, he should have realized you can't get away with murder, not even at sea on your own ship. See what I'm talking about? The twist of the story was that the monster was only haunting the stateroom because the captain had killed whoever that monster was in that room and now that the person got its revenge scaring the captain to death as whatever it turned into its haunt is now over so all the crypt stories more or less had this theme all different of course but all had some sort of cautionary warning the genius of these short stories was so impactful it literally sparked the creation of some of the most famous and iconic shows of all time such as alfred hitchcock presents which debuted in 1955 ironically the same year the original tales from the crypt ended coincidence i 
think not. Alfred Hitchcock was clearly a massive fan of the Tales from the Crypt comic series, so much so when it ended, he wanted to do his own version of it on TV. And that's essentially what Alfred Hitchcock presents or the Alfred Hitchcock Hour was. It was an anthology series of horror and suspense that served as cautionary or revenge tales. And much like Tales from the Crypt, it also had a host, but of course the host for Alfred Hitchcock Presents was Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, but not only did the Tales from the Crypt formula inspire one of the greatest directors of all time, but it also undoubtedly influenced another iconic show, The Twilight Zone. The Twilight Zone also followed the same formula as Tales from the Crypt. Alternatively, Twilight Zone is essentially just another version of Alfred Hitchcock Presents. But as we know, Alfred Hitchcock Presents was heavily based on the Tales from the Crypt format. And Twilight Zone also had its own horror host of sorts in the form of Rodman Edward Serling. The Twilight Zone would go on to be one of the most iconic TV shows of all time, running from 1954 to 1964. It also got an amazing theme park ride in the form of the Tower of Terror at Hollywood Studios' Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida. So it's just crazy that this 1950s anthology horror comic quite literally influenced and might even be responsible for the creation of iconic TV like Alfred Hitchcock Presents and The Twilight Zone. But its influence expanded far beyond that as other iconic writers and directors cited Tales from the Crypt as one of their influences, including the most prolific horror writer of all time, Stephen freaking King. But also the greatest director of all time, Steven Spielberg, and one of the all-time greatest horror directors, John Carpenter, who brought us iconic horror stories like Halloween, The Thing, The Fog, and more. The point is, Tales from the Crypt is one of the most important franchises in the horror game. With that said, Tales from the Crypt would also make its way to the small screen in 1989 on HBO, a series that ran from 89 to 1996, for a total of seven seasons, which consisted of 93 episodes. Two of the series' executive producers were Richard Donner and Robert Zemeckis. That's right, this series had some huge Hollywood names working on it. It's also here we would get the Crypt Keeper we're all familiar with, who would become a horror icon, the wisecracking corpse voice by John Kasur. Now I've said it before on the show, but the Crypt Keeper puppet scared the hell out of me as a kid. My dad watched this show in the living room all the time, and I would get glimpses of it, and it scared the hell out of me. But oddly enough, I still liked it. I guess that's the fun of horror. It scares you, but for some reason, we keep coming back for more. The point is, this show is a 90s staple and became a horror staple in general. And as I got older, I was obsessed. What's also really cool is the show incorporated comic book cover art that was done by Mike Vosberg and Sean McManus to honor the series roots. The success of the Tales of the Crypt live action show spawned an animated series that started in 1993 and ran from 1999 for a total of three seasons. The first two seasons were back to back, one in 93 and the second in 94. Then there was a huge gap in the seasons and the series would be revived in 99 for a third and final season. I absolutely loved this show as a child and I feel like it's one of those 90s cartoons that is often forgotten. It was just a dumbed down, non-violent, non-profanity version of the Tales from the Crypt TV show. And even though the series was dumbed down to make it appropriate for children, it still had some pretty spooky elements to it. Definitely more so than, let's say, Scooby-Doo or something else along those lines. You know what it was kind of like? Are you afraid of the dark? Like that. Because that junk, still kind of creepy. It was just enough to be scary, but not overly so. And speaking of Are You Afraid of the Dark, there are still some episodes that are like, damn, how are they able to show this to kids? Like the ghastly Grinner episode? That is genuinely creepy. In any case, the Tales from the Crypt animated series was fantastic and needs to be talked about more. Then in 2007, the Tales from the Crypt comic would be relaunched under Paper Cuts Publishing and lasted 13 issues. The first intro opens up with the classic Crypt Keeper as well as the Vault Keeper and the Old Witch by his side as the Crypt Keeper says, well, we meet again, boils and ghouls. It's been too long. I missed you, but my aim is getting much better. You dismember my two fiends and me, don't you? The ghoul lunatics tellers of twisted tales and terror and shock. Now for me, the series wasn't as good as the original, but still fun nonetheless and a must read for any horror fan. I just hope the series gets revived yet again in either comic book form or even TV. With all the streaming services out, it's crazy the show hasn't got a remake with us living in the era of remakes. And just like that, we have the history of the Tales from the Crypt, which started all the way back in the 50s of the comic book era, like so many great things. But with that said, we hope you guys have a happy and safe Halloween. Get candy, scare people, trick or treat friends. Trick or treat. But are you a fan of the Tales of the Crypt comic? Did you like the HBO TV show? Did you like the animated series? Let us know down in the comments. Other than that, we'll see you next time when I talk about all things comics.